a village with an industry that was once the pride of the British Empire, this is St. Madeline, and today we are featuring it on Five Facts with South is Love. St. Madeline lays between San Fernando and Princestown, and its introduction into recorded history was in 1838 during the post slavery period. Although many believe that this village was named after a saint, according to historians, its owner, Marie Madeline, named the estate after herself in the 1830s. St. Madeline was initially known for its impassable roads, but also for the magnificent Sipero River, which allowed for easy transportation of the sugarcane crop via sea. In the 1850s, under Marie Madeleine, the St. Madeleine Sugar Estate was doing well. But in 1870, when the Colonial Company bought the estate and built a using or large sugar factory, things really took off for sugar production in St. Madeleine. The company spent £213,000, which is approximately £35 million today, on its construction, introducing modern methods of processing sugar. By 1872, Eusene St. Madeleine became the first central sugar factory. Over time, ownership shifted from the colonial company to Tate and Lyle and then to Carney 1975 until its closure in 2007. This factory and the sugarcane industry shaped St. Madeleine through creation of employment, the distribution of land to workers, the migration of East Indian and Dentian laborers, the influx of Barbadian and Guyanese workers, and modernized transport systems. It's clear that St. Madeleine was a key village in our nation's economic development. One quick point to note, Mr. Garfield Blackburn, also known as Lord Shorty or Rash Shorty I, was once an employee at this factory in the accounts department. One important aspect of St. Madeline life was the train system that was used to transport sugarcane in and out of the village. In 1859, the Sapero Tramway was established, connecting the Sapero Wharf in San Fernando to using St. Madeline. This line eventually expanded as time progressed, and it was a source of excitement for the little ones, especially in the village. Although Trinidad's last passenger train made its final run in 1968, the ones transporting sugarcane ceased operations on May 15, 1998, when the last train rolled into St. Madeline. In Stanleyville, St. Madeline, there stands the signal man's quarters and the lever, which allowed the train coming from San Fernando to be sent on the line to Malgritude, Princestown via the Glenroy Tunnel. Here, where the original train line ran, you still see remnants of its memory. For instance, the train stop bar. Lady Thelmoy Edna Hotroy, the wife of our first Governor General Sir Solomon Hotroy and founder of the Lady Hotroy Home, grew up right here in St. Madeline. Born Thelma Huggins on September 17, 1910, to parents Peter and Lilla Huggins, young Thelma lived right here as her parents owned and operated a dry goods store for the village. Not much is recorded of her early life until her marriage to Sir Solomon Hochoy in 1935. From there, she went on to form the TTARC in 1958 and opened the Lady Hochoy home in Cookery in 1961. Although she never returned to live in St. Madeline, she was well known for her kindness and generosity, a reflection of the village of her birth. At the St. Clement's Anglican Church, you can find a structure at the front of the churchyard named the African Holocaust Memorial Park. Within the park is a monument dedicated to the memory of the 600 million African slaves who died during the transatlantic slave trade. This park and monument were created in 1997 by Pastor Clive Griffith, who subsequently changed his name to Kwame Molabani and it is an important element of emancipation celebrations in South Trinidad. The Memorial Park is an amazing addition to the St. Clement's Church compound and a key monument in memory of our history. 
This quiet, tight-knit village of St. Madeline, with its rich history and its mixture of cultures and people, is quite remarkable when viewing its overall impact on the nation's development. I hope you enjoyed this episode and join us next time as we take you to yet another community in South Trinidad.